Okay, so today, this class, um, Data Communications and Network 1, we will go to lecture 6, okay, which is um, still chapter 3 of Transmission Media, part 2, Unguided Media. So for the unguided media, okay, we use antenna for transmission, okay, which radiate the electromagnetic energy into the air, okay, into the medium which is the air, okay, and it's also received or uh, the electromagnetic wave, okay, from the sur surrounding medium. The configuration for the wireless transmission, okay, so wireless or unguided media we send through the air, mostly, okay. Um, in this case, we have the frequency range of um, okay three three um, different frequency range. Okay, the first one is um, two gigahertz to forty gigahertz. Okay, this one is um, the signal will go. Okay, the waveform. Okay, we go to the air as a directional signal. Okay, so the antenna that receive will receive in only one direction. Directional means that it, it have a direction to go to the receiver. Okay, so this is a terrestrial uh, microwave, which is a microwave that you send the signal um, on the surface of the Earth, okay? And the satellite microwave that you send the signal through the sky and re re repeat back on to the air station. Um, we use the focused electromagnetic beam because um, they have a direction. And we, uh, the transmitter and the receiving antenna, okay, must be aligned. It have to have a line of sight. They have to see each other in order to receive the signal, send and receive the signal, okay? This is a point-to-point -point transmission. The second one is the frequency range of um, 30 megahertz to one gigahertz. This is omnidirectional, which means that there is no direction. It's like it can receive for all direction, okay? All over itself. So the antenna doesn't have to have um, to, the antenna can receive, okay, in all, of, all over it, okay? So it doesn't have to, put to the only one direction. This is like the radio, okay? If you think of the radio, it can pick up uh, the, the signal from the station, okay? The song, okay? The voice, okay? Of DJ from the station. Uh, although you don't just, you know, you don't have to kind of track um, the direction of the signal, okay? In this case, uh, transmitted signal spread out in all directions, okay? So any antenna in the area can receive the signal. So as I say, it's like broadcast radio that you listen to. Um, the third category of, of the third range is the frequency from uh, 3 to 10 to the 11 to 2, to 2 times 10 to the 14. This is the range of the infrared, okay, which is uh, below the visible light. Uh, the infrared does not penetrate walls, okay, so it has um, good property, okay, that it can be used for free since it does not disturb the other users, okay? So if you use it inside your room, it does not um, go to the other user. It do not interfere, okay, since it cannot penetrate the wall. Um, the light of light propagation, okay, means that when you want to um, to send the signal of the in the infrared range, okay, it has to see each other, the receiver and the transmitter have to be light of sight. And um, think of this as a remote control, okay? If you have a remote control and you, um, when you point to some, okay, you have a remote control, okay? You point to some, somewhere to a monitor or um, TV, okay, air conditioning, you have to point it to the um, receive, receiving, or you know, at, at, the, at the other side, okay? If not, it cannot turn on or turn off cannot ex uh, receive the signal. Um, so we use in the local area, okay, which means uh, the small area inside of the home, okay. Um, so, so the main uh, application that people know about is the remote control, okay. The people have been using widely. Um, because as I said, this is used for free, which means that the other two are not used for free, okay. To have a radio station, you have to uh, pay for the, to get the frequency range, okay, kind of, to get the, the use of that frequency range. 
the satellite also you have to pay um, the government, okay, agent, agent, okay, to get the uh, use of the frequency. You have to bid for that frequency range. Like we have heard about the the news about bidding for the cellular phone, okay, frequency. Um, okay, for the unguided media, the first one that we will talk about is terrestrial microwave. As I say, that is the microwave that we sent on the surface of the Earth. Okay, um, this one use um, few okay far fewer amplifiers and repeaters than coaxial cable for some for the same distance. So this is used for long distance uh, communication. Okay, because you can send um, you don't have to have a lot of um, station um, the repeater. But it requires light outside transmission. Okay, so you want the antenna to be tall. Sometimes you will see the antenna on top of the mountain or on the hill or on top of the building. Okay, so that doesn't have to uh, build from the ground. Okay, because um, you will have you will not have uh, obstacles. Okay, if you put on the top of the mountain, then then you can have light outside easily. But if you put it on the ground, you will have something. You know in between that obstruct your point of view and it cannot um, be transmitted with the light of sight. Um, okay. Um, so, and, but with no obstacle, okay, the maximum distance with, between antennas follow this formula. Um, because the curve is, the, the surface of the earth is curved, okay, it's not the Earth, the Earth is round, right? It's a, it's a, a, it's, so it's not, um, you cannot go straight line, you will hit the curve, the curvature of the Earth, okay? So therefore, um, you have the, the distance, you can go, maximum distance, okay, between antenna equal to 7.14 multiplied by uh, square root of kH, okay? Um, H is the antenna height in meters, K is the adjustment factor, okay, about, Four over three. Um, K is more than one because the microwave are bent with the curvature of the Earth, so it's actually not the straight line. Okay, it can bend a little bit. Okay, so it can propagate further than the optical line of sight. Okay. Um, to achieve the long distance transmission, what we do is that we have a series of microwave relay towers um, to have. Um, kind of a repeater, okay? So you would link them together to send to the very long distance, okay? Maybe different countries, okay? We also have a terrestrial microwave um, link, okay, between Gesesat um, at Bangkit in, in Bangkok and at the Sukhonakorn, okay? Which is the campus at Sukhonakorn. We also have this kind of link, okay? Um, so we use for long haul com telecommunication service. Okay, we use for voice and telev television transmission, short point to point link between buildings. So if you have kind of many buildings in, in the same company, okay, and you want to send to have the send the, the signal, but you cannot put a line between them. Okay, maybe it's across the street. Okay, so you cannot put a line between them. You can have um, you can have the microwave um, link. Okay. So if you look at this, if you have like two buildings here, okay, and another building here, but there's a street in between, okay? This is your company and this is another company. You cannot put a put a line, the Y here, okay, across the street. Okay, so this is a street. So what you can do is that you put microwave link, okay, between the two buildings. Okay, um, transmission characteristic of the, of the terrestrial microwave, the frequency is in the range of about 2 to 40 kilohertz. Um, the higher the frequency that is used, the higher the potential bandwidth, okay? As I said that if you have, um, if you have a higher bandwidth, okay, then you will have potentially higher data rate. Okay, let's look at this. If you have a frequency of if you use two gigahertz, okay, so the bandwidth has to be, you know, more more than no more than about four gigahertz. And actually, 
to have good um, property, the signal is actually very close to the to the center of the, you know, have too close to the carrier here, so it's much um, lower. Maybe if you go out 10%, so you have 10%, um, 5%, okay, on the other, on each side, you have 10% total, okay? So the 10% total, you have um, 200 megahertz bandwidth. Now, if you have instead, okay, 20 gigahertz, okay, so you go out like 5% each, okay, so total is 10%. Now you have a bandwidth of 2 gigahertz. So you can see that, okay, so you can see that uh, if you have a higher frequency, um, you use at a higher frequency range, okay, the bandwidth is potentially higher. Uh, now let's compare the twisted pair and coaxial cable loss, okay, the loss of between the guided media, okay, of the twisted pair, coaxial cable with the microwave. The main source of loss, okay, for sending signal is attenuation. For the microwave, the loss varies, okay, as the square of the distance. And the loss in dB can be expressed as this equation, L loss in dB equal to 10 times log of um, square of 4 pi d over lambda, okay, where d is the distance, lambda is the wavelength in the same unit. So if you want d in uh, meters, lambda is also in meters, okay. And please remember that the wavelength for um, formula, okay, is lambda equal to C over F, where C is the speed of light, or uh, three times 10 to the eight meters per second, okay? And the frequency is what you are using. This loss is called path loss, or free space loss. And it is due to the fact that the energy spread out as an electromagnetic wave propagates from a transmitting source. Okay, so um, you can see that the relationship between the free space loss, the frequency and the di distance, okay, is as shown in this uh, graph, okay, and this is the form, the, this is the corresponding formula, okay, the loss is in the y-axis, loss in dB, okay, x-axis is the distance, okay, you see that for the, um, if the frequency is low at 30 megahertz, frequency of 30 megahertz, okay, the loss is lowest um, with the same distance, okay, but if the frequency go up to 300 megahertz, okay, the loss go up, go to 3 gigahertz, 30 gigahertz, 300 gigahertz, the loss go up, okay, um, with the frequency and also with the distance. Now, we take a look at the, at the equation, okay? We have the equation L equal to 10 log of 4 pi d over lambda square, okay? And, but we also have another formula. This is a general formula, okay? That loss is equal to 10 log of p transmit, okay, over P received square, okay, so, okay, and this is also the same as 20 log of 4 pi d over lambda, okay. So we have the loss, okay, depend on if you know the transmitting power and the receiving power, or if you know the distance and the length and the frequency, okay? So can you can use um, this equation or this equation. This is the general equation. This is the equation for microwave. General, okay. Um, so, from, from this, from L equal to 20 log of 4 pi d over lambda, if you change lambda to c over f, okay, you get 20 log of 4 pi 
F D over C, okay, which is equal to 20 log F, okay, because you have um, several parameters here, multiply and divide together, plus 20 log of D, because it's um, on the numerator, okay, and minus, because this is, this is the, this you know, okay, this one you know, this one you know, this is unknown, 3 times 10 to the 8, Okay, meter per second. So when you calculate this out, you will get 147.56 dB. So you see that this is a constant. So loss depends on frequency and distance. Okay, frequency go up, loss go up. Distance go up, loss go up. Now let's look at an example of um, example of a problem. Okay, suppose you have um, you have um, power. Okay, at the transmitter, we call it power reference, and there are two distance between. Um, um, do distance from the P reference, okay, at the center. You can see that the signal, since the microwave is omnidirectional, oh, uh, sorry, the microwave is directional, but when you send, okay, and it depends on how you set your antenna, okay. Um, so any, any place that is the same distance, okay, the same distance from the, from the center can receive the same power, okay. And that's why it's, I, I put it as a circle there, okay, with the distance uh, D1. It will receive power D, P1. Because the antenna, the receive antenna can be at just one place, okay? Um, can be just at one place because you have to have line of sight. But it can be at any place, you know, along the circumfer circum um, circumstance of the circle, okay? And it will receive the power P1 with the distance D1. Then if there is another receiving antenna at the distance D2, which can be any, again, any place along the circumference of the, with the same distance D2, uh, okay, it will receive the power P2. And we will see uh, what is the uh, relationship between P1 and P2, okay, of when you send the signal from the center, okay, from one place. Okay, to the different distance, okay, uh, antenna at different distance. So loss at the distance D1 is equal to 10 log of P reference over P1. This is the general um, equation of loss, okay. And this is equal to also, uh, this is the microwave um, equation. It's 10 log of square of 4 pi D1 over lambda. Loss at the distance D2 is similar, okay? So you get similar equation, but uh, change from D1 to D2. Then if you divide the, the first equation by the second equation, okay? What you get is that it will all cancel out, right? What you get, okay, let's, let me show you. You have, um, Ten log of p reference over p one equal to ten log of four pi d one over lambda square, and you have another equation p two equal to ten log of four pi d two over lambda square. Okay, if you divide these together. You can take uh, the chain lock out, okay, the chain lock out, and you just consider uh, this, okay, because they have the chain lock for both sides, okay, so you get the argument out. So P reference over P1 uh, divided by P, P reference over P2, so multiply by P2 over P reference, okay, equal to um, D1 over D2 square, okay, the other parameters are cancelled out. Okay. Over only D1 and D2 left and square. 
So this one have P2 over P1 equal to D1 over D2 square. You can see that it's reversed, okay? Um, power 2 over power 1 equal to distance 1 over distance 2. And this is also have a square, okay? So if the distance is 1 half, which means that, for example, D1 is 100 meters from the source, D2 is 200 meters from the source, then the power will be reduced to only one quarter, okay? So the, the power that you receive at D1 will be four times of what you receive at D2, okay? If it's uh, twice of the distance. And, it is, and the distance is um, a variable, okay? So you can put anything in. Um, if you send to uh, one kilometers, um, and you get, for example, you get uh, one milliwatt. What happened at the, what, what, uh, what kind of power will you receive at the two kilometers, okay? You will receive, uh, suppose you got one watt at one kilometers, you will get one fourth, okay, or 0.25 watt at the uh, two kilometers, okay? So every time that you double the distance, okay, it will cost about 6 dB loss for microwave, okay, microwave, uh, this print here, a microwave transmission. Okay, so 6 dB every time that you double the distance or one quarter of the power, okay, in the value. Now let's look at the, what is the loss for twisted pair and coaxial cable. These two are very easy, okay, for the guided media or the wire or the cable, okay, the loss is, um, it's just that it's very, okay, log logarithmically, okay, in ratio with distance. So the loss is linear in decibel, okay, so A equal to A sub S multiplied by D uh, with the unit of dB. And A is the attenuation of the, or the loss, okay, we, we sometimes we call it attenuation, sometimes we call it loss, it's the same. Okay, and A is a specific it's a specific attenuation, okay, which depends on the type of the transmission line. This is dB per kilometer. So if you remember the table, okay, that I showed you before, that have the, from last lecture. See here. This is the typical attenuation, okay, dB per kilometer. This is the one that um, the A sub S, okay, a specific attenuation. And D is the distance. So if it's dB per kilometer, D have to be uh, kilometers two, okay? D has to be kilometers two. Now, So microwave transmission, the attenuation increase with rainfall, okay? We have to, um, so if it's raining, um, we have to worry about the interference um, when, when it's rain, okay? If it's heavy rain, then the signal may be lost. So if you use um, the frequency, okay, over 10 gigahertz, what you see is that um, this is usually a satellite um, communication, okay? Satellite communication use um, very high uh, frequency, okay? You see that the wavelength is very small and it can be affected by the, the doublet of the rain, okay? And that's why when it's rain, the attenuation increase a lot. And um, the second one that we're gonna talk about, the uh, second application of the microwave, main application is a satellite microwave, okay? We do the same principle as terrestrial microwave. However, if you use a satellite as a relay station or re repeater, okay? So if you link two or more Earth station together, instead of sending to another, um, another station, okay, on Earth, the station is on the sky, in the sky. And in this case, it will allow to, um, you to cover a very, a very large dis uh, distance, okay? So you can have um, satellite TV, okay, and receive the signal from the other side, um, you know, like um, when they have the football, okay, uh, Olympic football, um, sorry, um, Olympic sport, okay, and you can see it, okay, from other countries, okay. Um, and the satellite is good for broadcasting, okay, so 
it can be sent to many, many earth stations. So you have um, two configurations here. The first one is point to point. Okay, so one earth station sent to satellite and another earth station sent received. Um, another one is the broadcast. Okay, so one station, as I say, is if there's a World Cup, okay, uh, football, and then you have um, they and they play at um, you know some some sports center, some some stadium that is. Um, very far from us, okay, and they have they want to show to all the world. So they, uh, the transmitter sent from that country to the satellite, and the satellite sent sent back down to other place, okay, and you all the receiver in that area can receive the signal. So it's good to have you know if you have a satellite TV, then um, the the received okay antenna or the received. Um, yeah, the, the receive a station can be very cheap, okay, because it can receive all of the, it can share the cost of the signal because it's all of the receiver in the area can receive it. Okay. Now let's look at um, another important um, satellite um, application, okay, of the, um, what we do is, okay, this is a geosynchronous satellite. Sometimes it's called geostationary satellite. Okay, for this uh, satellite, the satellite will remain, or it seems like it stay at the same place, okay, in the sky. But you know, right, that the Earth is moving. So the Earth, as the Earth turn, the satellite also turn. Okay, so it's turned at the same speed as the Earth. So it will look like it's always, if it's on top of your head, it's always on top of your head all the time. Okay, so that's why it seems like it's fixed or stationary. And um, still have the angular velocity as the, the same as the Earth, okay? The orbit has to um, be at 35,784 kilometers from the surface of the Earth, okay? So the number of possible geosynchronous satellites is quite limited because it have only one orbit, okay? That can have geosynchronous satellite. So if this is the Earth and this is the orbit, okay, geosynchronous orbit. So if you have satellite, okay, so you have only, you know, even though you have um, a lot of, of space at other height, okay, the the geosynchronous has to be only on this uh, on this orbit, okay. So it's very limited. Geosynchronous satellite, okay, if we use three um, satellites, uh, we will cover almost, you know, almost all of the surface of the Earth, okay? Usually what happens is that we cover like on the, like Thailand, you know, on the middle, okay, of the Earth, but what, what is not covered is the North Pole and the South Pole and like the Scandinavian, okay, that those will have some problem using uh, geosynchronous satellite. So they will use a uh, different kind of satellite, like elliptical orbit, okay? But for us, we can use, uh, you know, because the satellite is like on this, um, at the center, okay? So, so it can cover most of the countries of the Earth. Since the satellite, uh, the geosynchronous satellite is um, limited, okay? Um, there are also people who try to make, um, you know, to use other orbit, lower orbit, okay? But in this case, the satellite cannot stay stationary, okay? It has to move because this is not the same, the height that it can have the angular velocity as the turning of the Earth. So it has the, sorry, it doesn't have the same velocity as the angular velocity of the Earth. So um, at the lower level, okay, lower height as about 160 kilometers or 2,000 kilometers from the surface of the Earth, which is much, much lower. Um, the other one, geosynchronous, is 35,000 kilometers, okay? So this one is low, lower orbit, so we call it low Earth orbit or LEO, okay, satellite. This one has a much uh, less propagation delay than the geosynchronous satellite because it's much closer to the Earth, okay? So if you look at 
Geo synchronous will be um, sorry. Geo synchronous is this Geo. This is this is very close. This is Leo. Okay. So when you send um, signal, okay, if you send your signal to here and then receive it back, okay, it's very far, so it have a lot of delay. But if you send it over here, just very shorter distance. Lower time delay. Okay, so if you send for Leo, it's very fast, go up and go down. So it's short distance and lower time delay than the geosynchronous satellite. However, the Leo is moving, okay? The satellite here, Leo, is keep moving. So when you see it, okay, you will see like it's, it's moving all the time. It's not stay at the same place. So it uh, is moved fast over the F each region of the Earth, okay? So it's usual you see a Leo satellite for minutes. Okay, sometimes like 10 minutes or 15 minutes and it's gone. So it's go from one horizon and then go over our head and go uh, down. Okay, it's like the sun go up and then go down, but this is a satellite. Okay, so this one uh, we want to use uh, omnidirectional antenna to receive the signal. Sometimes uh, the receiving antenna can be the one that uh, move, okay? It can move when the satellite is on the on this side of the horizon. The receiving antenna can can receive this signal, and when it go up, okay, this the receiving antenna can move, okay, change directions to to receive the signal from this. So the satellite go up from one horizon to another horizon, okay, of the Earth, and the uh, and the antenna can be omnidirectional, or it can kind of change change the receiving um, direction, okay, so that it can receive all of them. One of the simplest um, LEO uh, satellite, okay, is stored forward satellite. So you have one, at one country, you want to send the information, okay, um, to another country. Sometimes you have a research, okay. In Gesetsa University, in Faculty of Engineering, we have an Earth station called Tulaporn Earth Station, okay, that First, it did the store and forward at first, okay? So it sent the data up to the satellite. And, um, okay, sometimes like at, with the China, it's a cooperation with the China. So China sent the um, information, okay, to the satellite and we received the information, okay? This is for research. Um, another application is a satellite telephone system, okay? In this case, since the satellite is moving all the time, like we have for only minutes to see the satellite, so it's have to uh, have, they have to have many, many satellites, okay, that is moving so that we see a satellite, at least one satellite all the time so that it can uh, hand over our signal, okay, because when it goes down, you cannot see our, um, you cannot get our telephone signal, okay, the satellite telephone signal anymore. So it had to head over to another satellite. So this one go down, this one go up, okay? And then this one go down, this one go up, okay? So, so it's kind of move all along the, um, in the orbit, okay? So let's look at the satellite network, okay? Uh, the satellite need to communicate with each other uh, to form a satellite network. So it's kind of a cellular phone network but is the, the base station is there are satellites okay, that are on the sky. Um, this is similar to, um, okay, so, so as I say, similar to the terrestrial cellular phone, but uh, instead of the base station on Earth, the satellite is the base station. Uh, example of the LEO satellites are Iridium and SMMS. SMMS are small multi-mission satellite. This is the, the one at the uh, base station of a station of Jula Pond, a station at Faculty of Engineering, Kasesa University. Uh, if you want to know more about Iridium, you can look at um, in the website here, as I list it here. Um, Iridium is actually is um, a material, okay, or that 
supposed to have 77 okay, or electron. Okay? Um, so at first, it was decided to have 77 electrons, uh, 77 satellites okay, as this uh, iridium. Uh, how, like at this um, chemical substance. However, um, at first it was very difficult, okay, because it was very expensive, and they have to have combine many compa company cooperate together, and and they try to reduce the cost, okay. So instead of seventy seven satellite, they use only sixty six satellites, and they have six orbit. Each orbit have uh, each of the orbit has. Um, 11 satellites, okay, and you use KA band for transmitting control signal. K band is uh, higher than the C band and KU band that we use uh, at home, okay. Altitude is uh, about 781 kilometers from the surface of the Earth and is uh, moving at the speed of 26,000 um, 26, kilometers per hour, okay. It's of the satellite will complete one orbit around the Earth in 100 meters. So very quick, okay. So one day it cover uh, many many times, okay. And a user will see each satellite for about ten minutes, and you have to hand over to another satellite, okay. So as I say, it's, uh, you have a uh, iridium is the name of a substance has the atomic number of seventy seven. And this is example of a satellite in a iridium system, okay. And this is the orbit of the iridium system, of the satellite in the iridium system. Now let's look at SMMS. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a website, as I say, um, at the GSSAT, okay? It's a cooperation between Thai government and Chinese government, okay? So ICT with the Department of Electrical Engineering and Department of Aerospace Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, GSSAT University. And the uh, station was uh, established, okay? Um, in 2011, okay, this is a this a Leo satellite, okay, experimental purpose. Um, now I I believe that they have more satellite, okay, and uh, for the GSSA students, I will take you to a field trip to this uh, station. Um, there are two types of payload, okay, for this SMMS satellite, the KA band communications, which is have the uplink and downlink of about 29.99 um, uh, gigahertz, uplink is 29.22 gigahertz, um, downlink is 18.72 gigahertz, okay? So there's experiment on the main, many things, okay? Um, they have atmospheric effect, okay? And they have studied a lot of um, uh, what is going on on, on on the surface of the Earth, like the, um, like the crops, you know, how um, rice crops, okay? Uh, this area is like, um, what is the, um, what is the age of the rice crop, okay? Um, is this, uh, this is just um, plant, planted or is already um, ripe, okay? Or about the corn or um, it can, it can do um, what is like the, um, the storm that coming, something like that. So, um, so this is uh, what is done in the imaging, okay, for payload, okay. That have three type of cameras: the multispectral uh, camera, the hyperspectrum, and the infrared, okay. And it will observe the Earth, like um, check the disaster, okay. This is the one sweep, okay. When when it sweep uh, through the surface, it will have uh, like a length that it can see. Okay, uh, the the width. Okay, that you can see, and you go along the surface of the urban is circle. Okay. Uh, so this is the first image from Julapon receiving uh, station. I will show you the this website in case you are interested. Okay. So sorry. Um, okay, they change it to csrs.ku.ac.th. C, C S, sorry. Okay. 
Okay, so this is a new website. So you can see that they have uh, a lot of information here. Okay, this is uh, how it sweep. Okay, the, the, the figure that because the satellite is moving and it's keep receiving, and this is the amount of rain. Okay, that go to Thailand. Okay, this is the um, like the weather forecast or not not really the weather forecast. The, the weather that is happening. Okay for all 24 hours, so they have the station and, okay, and I say, if you're a guest is a university, uh, university student in my class, then I will take you to this station, a station. Okay, now let's go back to the material here. Okay, now what, what are the main applications of communication satellite? As I said, there are many kinds of satellite, um, okay, um, but we are focused on communication satellite, okay? Some, some will like for, do weather forecast, some will do like GPS, some will do like uh, satellite TV, something like that, okay? Communication satellite is a, is a revolution, okay? As important as fiber optics. So for the guided media, fiber optic was a breakthrough uh, for the unguided media, sunlight was a breakthrough, okay? So the most important applications are t television distribution, okay? Long distance telephone transmission and global posi positioning system, okay? It's of a broadcast nature, so it's good to, uh, to distribute the television, okay? Throughout the world. Now let's look at this. I, I told you that microwave is You need line of sight. Microwave require line of sight so that if you have a um, station here, you have to see each other, okay? To, to talk to, uh, to each other. But when it is satellite, satellite is really far from the Earth, okay? So line of sight of satellite. This is line of sight, okay? The light of satellite cover a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, space in the, on the Earth. Okay, so so all of this, um, if it if they have the the receiving antenna, if they have the receiving antenna in here, okay, all of this antenna in the area can receive the signal from this satellite. Okay, if it uh, geostationary. You can even uh, cover, like you know, you know, almost one third of the Earth, okay. And this is considered life so because this is very, very far away. This is service area. G O, and this is L O. Okay, uh, now look at the transmission characteristic of satellite. The optimum frequency range is 1 to 10 gigahertz. Okay, why is that? Because if it's below 1 gigahertz, there is noise from, a lot of noise from natural source, okay, such as atmospheric noise, man-made interference, from electronic uh, devices, but if it's above 10 gigahertz, okay, signal is severely attenuated by atmospheric absorption and rain. Okay, so we want to use between 1 and 10 gigahertz. And at first, uh, it was um, designed to use uh, the C band, okay, the most common frequency range, which is 4 slash 6 um, gigahertz, okay, which is um, C band. Um, the uplink is about 6 gigahertz, the dialing is about 4 gigahertz. But then uh, this band is full, okay? Everyone is using this, so that is not enough. Then they, um, they up the frequency to KU band, okay? KU band is up 12, sorry, uh, 12 slash 14, 
f14 gigahertz and down 12 gigahertz. Uh, the down link, okay, is always lower frequency. Okay, why is that? The down link is always lower frequency. Because for um, high frequency, higher frequency, smaller antenna. Okay, so if there's a satellite here, and this is a, the Earth station, right? The Earth station can have large antenna because it's on Earth, okay? It's easy to have large antenna. But the satellite in here, you want small antenna okay since because you don't want it to be heavy right you want the, the you, you want the satellite to be you know to be lightweight as possible okay because you have to to send you know um, it up to the sky with a lot of fuel okay so you want it to have um, lightweight antenna small antenna if you use small antenna so this is high frequency this is low frequency, okay? Then, and that's why you see four side six, this is down, link, this is up, link, always, okay? Now, let's look at the, so C band and KU band are the one that uh, people use a lot. Um, KA band are the one that is like experimental, um, it's go up to 20 slash 30 gigahertz, which is very high. Um, however, um, it's still under experiment. Okay. The third one is of the technique for the unguided, you know, under the unguided media is the radio. Radio frequency is from 3 kilohertz to 300 megahertz. This is easy to generate, okay? Radio frequency is easy to generate and penetrate buildings easily. So you have a radio um, at, you know, in your phone or, or at home, okay? And, um, and the station, the radio station is far away, okay? It can still send to you through, through, um, through the wall, penetrate through the wall and into um, and, and to your um, receiver, okay, in the radio. So you can use both indoors and outdoors, okay? It's omnidirectional, so as I said, you don't have to move around. Um, I mean, you don't have to, to find the direction of the station that's transmitting. Um, so the receiving and transmitting antennas does, doesn't have to be aligned, okay? Now the property of the radio wave, okay? Since uh, the frequency range is quite, um, is quite large, okay, and they are different characteristics for different subset of the frequency range. Let's look at the low frequency, okay? VLF, LF, and MF band. In this case, the radio wave follow the ground. We call it ground wave propagation below 2 megahertz, okay? So it can pass through the obstacle wheel, wheel, but the power fall off very quickly, okay, with distance. So when you go a little bit further, okay, this, the power is uh, reduced a lot drop a lot, okay? Because it's uh, in the air when it's you send um, the signal at low frequencies, the power will drop um, deep, um, with the one over R cube, okay, in the air, okay? And this is a lot, so when the distance, R is like the distance that you go, okay? So from one, uh, one meter to two meters, okay, it's dropped by eight, uh, eight times, something like that. Okay, at high frequency, okay, um, this is actually not very high, but uh, at first, okay, it's HF, okay, it's HF, but usually when we are transmitting, we send at the, um, you know, even higher frequency than that, if it's microwave. Anyway, it's called HF, at HF band, okay? The ground waves tend to be absorbed by the Earth. However, the waves that radiate upward to the ionosphere are reflected back to Earth. So you can use the amateur radio operation operator. It's like the Hams radio, because you have an ionosphere. Okay, you know, right? 
um, stratosphere, you know, troposphere, ionosphere. So in the ionosphere, they have ion, okay? And the signal you send to the ionosphere when it um, go to the ionosphere, it will reflect back to Earth and then reflect back and forth again. So you can receive um, the signal, okay, from from long distance. At higher frequency, as in the VHF, okay, or UHF, part of UHF, uh, 30 megahertz to about one gigahertz, okay. Sometimes we call this one uh, broadcast radio. This is covered the FM radio, UHF, VHF television, and um, in this frequency range, okay, ionosphere is transparent. So when you send something, it will just go through the ionosphere. It doesn't see the ionosphere at all. This one uses light offset propagation, which is like uh, micro. Um, so it obey the equation of the loss as a microwave. Okay, so for the radio frequency in VHF, you know, in the broadcast radio range, it should have the same loss equation as a microwave. Okay, so the even though it uses the same equation as the as the microwave, okay, it will lost. It has have a lower attenuation than the microwave because the wavelengths are longer because it have it use the lower frequency, okay, and uh, it use lower frequency, okay, up to about one gigahertz. But um, the microwave use uh, maybe two megahertz, two gigahertz to about um, tens of mega of gigahertz. Sorry, to about. Uh, tens of uh, megahertz, okay? So in this case, uh, with, higher, with lower frequency, lambda is higher, okay? And ha lambda is in the denominator here of the equation. So ra broadcast radio, we have lower attenuation than the, the microwave that we have talked about. Uh, the main source of impairment in this case is the multi-part interference, okay? Because uh, when it's sent, okay, uh, from one from one uh, station to another station, or from uh, transmitter to receiver, okay, it will have many parts. Sometimes it reflect from one place, okay, from the transmitter. It reflect from the floor. It reflect from the building. It reflect from the car that is moving. Reflect from all all over the place, okay. So there are many many parts that go from transmitter to the receiver. Receiver will get something like similar to the dispersion in the fiber optics. Okay, so we have the a lot of um, like the the signal. Okay, coming the same signal but coming at different times. So they will combine and it will be different from only one signal. Okay, so that is one of the problem. It's called multi-part interference. Okay, this is what I show you um, the mobile radio. Okay, that that reflect um, the buildings. Okay. So uh, this is the end of chapter three. For the next chapter, um, we will go to chapter four, which is the data encoding. Okay, in the next um, lecture. Thank you. Bye.